In a time when gaming execs were coming out and saying horror games weren't viable anymore, along came Amnesia The Dark Descent and shut them all up. Being the originator has its own problems though, there's the pressure to keep innovating, while the sequels, Machine for Pigs and Rebirth were okay, other horror games like Outlast and Alien Isolation really built on what Amnesia did. Now though, frictional games have added some bells and whistles that really make the bunker sing, and most importantly, the game is pant fouling. You play as Henry, a French World War I soldier who is injured and wakes up in the bunker with the exits caved in and most of its inhabitants dead. Now I know what you're thinking, Glenn, are you going to make a joke about Henry surrendering straight away in the credits roll. No, I know it's my duty as an Englishman to give the French a slag in, but at least they stick up for themselves when their government tries to pound them in all their orifices. So as Henry, you have to get out of the bunker. Obviously that is not as simple as it seems, what with a monster using the place as its hunting ground and everything being in lockdown. The plot is more straightforward than the previous game, there isn't much cosmic horror lurking in the background, which I don't mind personally, the more grounded setting and plot help the scares really. The bunker itself is explorable pretty much from the off and the game is pretty open-ended. You're not going from one objective to the next, instead as you explore the bunker you find notes and clues which give you new objectives to pursue. And it's a good way to do it. The bunker isn't overly large so you can remember the layout and no matter where you explore, odds are you will find something useful. It's reminiscent of old survival horror games like Resident Evil where the mansion itself became a character. One of the big mechanics in this game is the bunker's generator. You need to fuel it to light the bunker up. This makes you more safe from monster attacks. Obviously fuel is pretty scarce, so it's inevitable the fuel will run out a few points in your playthrough. There is a stopwatch to keep track of how much time you have, but once that's gone, shit gets real, and by real I mean clogging up your underwear. The monster functions a bit like the alien in Alien Isolation. Weapons like your revolver and grenades can stun it and get it to piss off for a bit, but it's always present. Not in an annoying way though, since there's plenty of ways to sneak around, hide, trap, or the good old French tactic of running away. I'm disappointed in myself with that. If you're wondering about the gunplay, it's fine, it's just clunky enough to keep the tension, but not so bad it's frustrating. Reloading takes a long time with you having to manually load each bullet, so it's best to keep on top of it. You have to be aware of how much noise you're making too. Blowing off the lock with your revolver might look cool, but there goes a precious bullet and oh, what's that crawling out of that hole? You also have a wind-up flashlight that makes noise, so if the lights have gone out and that's your only choice, good luck. The puzzles are pretty much gone from the previous game, it's more about exploring to find items and codes to unlock more areas of the bunker, which I enjoy as it keeps the pace up. I'm not stuck in a room trying to figure out a puzzle and wondering why the monster isn't taking this opportunity to rip my face off. You do have limited inventory space, but you can find bags to improve it, and there is a storage safe in your safe room. But with these systems, you can run into the problem of a few revolver bullets taking up the same space as a massive jerry can of fuel. I know it's a nitpick and it doesn't hurt the overall experience, but worth mentioning. There's no sanity meter in the game, which I'm down with. Henry's been serving in the First World War. He's probably seen some horrific things already. The hell monster hunting him is probably like a little holiday compared to the Somme. The sound design is outstanding. You can hear the monster knocking around in the vents and tunnels above you, and sometimes the sounds of battle can be heard where a shell hits the battlefield above. But is it a shell, or has the monster done a big poo in the vents? You'll never know. Graphically, the game looks a little bit dated. Not enough to ruin the atmosphere. Obviously, the lighting is outstanding standing, but the textures and animations just look okay. Also, Amnesia's physics system feels dated as well. Having to hold a button, then push the stick forward or back to open or close a door is just unnecessarily clunky. I know it adds a bit of tension when the monster is on your back, but really in that situation, I'd be running full pelt at that door and ramming my shoulder through it. But despite some dated elements, it's hard to not recommend Amnesia the Bunker. For me, I'd say it's the best in the series, and I think the First World War is an absolutely great setting for a horror game. And the Bunker has it where it counts most, and that's scaring the shit out of you. I'm such a mess, I'm lost, I'm no good at this. I'm in love, still in love, still in love with you. Hard as a try.